Hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm an engineer here at Palantir. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can take the Customer Service Engine application and tailor it to your organization. The Customer Service Engine is Palantir's customer service enterprise software. It is differentiated because it's not just a conversational UI for your customers or for your agents, but rather it creates and facilitates autonomous processes for your company operations, which are so unique for every business and industry. But if your company operations are so unique, you might think that there's a lot of development and time involved in making something like the CSE your own. We've thought of that, and so today I'll show you how an AI engineer can customize their CSE using Palantir's customization building blocks through Build with AIP. In this case, we'll be taking the perspective of a customer service engineer at a Notional Airlines company, Sunshine Air, and they've just downloaded the customer service engine from the AIP Now showcase. What can they do to make it more tailored to their organization? So to customize our CSE, we'll pull from Build with AIP, the reference library of starter kits, examples, and tutorials available with all AIP enrollments. I've picked out three Build with AIP products that I need to customize the CSE for Sunshine Air. A PDF parsing tool, an image recognition tool, and a tool to call on AIP in a third-party application. So let's start with the PDF parser. I firstly selected the PDF parser out of the box tool because our organization has a lot of custom-made standard operating procedures, which I want to be taken into account by AIP. We have specific policies to deal with things like flight cancellations and lost baggage claims, and AIP needs the context of these policies in order to recommend the best follow-up actions and generate the best customer response emails from my agents. So this is what the product looks like in Foundry. It's quite a point and click tool. The installation is very simple, and here I am just configuring it and the inputs and where I want it to be saved. So I'll keep all of the inputs as notional for now, and then I'll wait until those assets have been deployed. And let's open up the pipeline now to see that is that what has been deployed for us. We can see that there are lots of nodes and it looks pretty good, but we need to add our own data, right? So what I'm going to do is I drag and I drop my own PDF SOPs into the pipeline right there. And once I'm happy with that, once I can see that they've been uploaded into the pipeline, I'll start removing any transforms that the notional out-of-the-box example had. For example, it was about receipts initially, so I'm going to take away some of the formatting transforms that were unique to receipts. So here's the node that I can see is taking out the receipt info, and I'll remove that for now as it's not really relevant to my use case. And then I'll add in a column for an ID number because I want to have every SOP object having a unique ID that I can reference in later workshop applications. So here I am using the pipeline building point and click node generation tool. And I'm literally just scrolling through the entire list of transforms that I can apply. And I'm selecting the ones that I think might be able to help me generate an ID column. And here I am configuring that function. And then I'm able to generate the column that I want. So once I'm happy with that, I will add an output node to the pipeline, and then I'll build that parsed output, which in this case is a data set. And first I'll just configure what my output data set will look like, ensure that it has the correct name and schema, and then I'll make sure that it's building and deploying correctly. Great, that looks like it's been built. And then once those PDFs have been parsed and the dataset has been built, I'll add them to my CSE pipeline by connecting the new SOPs to my existing SOP object that came with the CSE. And then the next steps after that would be to rerun any logic that involves taking in those SOPs and generating the new suggested actions for each one of them. And here's an example of what the, look, or what the app would look like when that's finished. When I go into my CSE application, I can see that my SOPs have been surfaced and referenced to create company and business specific actions and recommendations. And I can see them all in the app. So whenever there's something I'm curious about, I can see which SOP is backing a certain action or recommendation from my LLM. So the next thing that I'm going to deploy for Sunshine Air is the image recognition tool. 
at Sunshine, at Sunshine Air, we sometimes get baggage claims and people don't usually know or have a picture of what their bag looks like, but they might be able to describe it to us. So we want to be able to develop an LLM to identify what the lost or misplaced baggage might look like. And we can use that in combination with our airport scanners to identify where the lost luggage is a lot quicker. So here I am deploying this marketplace product. And again, it's pretty comprehensive and point and click. And this one even has a walkthrough guide um, of how to comprehensively apply LLMs to images, ensuring that I'm deploying my code correctly. So I built it just like this, just like the PDF parser tool, and I'll wait for those assets to deploy. So here they are. We're looking at all the different files that have been deployed by this product. Um, and we can see there's some code here. And what this code is doing is it is installing the GPT-based vision function that I need the CSE to call upon every time one of our customers has a lost baggage claim. And I don't really need to make any changes to that right now. It looks good, but I like to know how it works under the hood in case I need to change it in future. So now what I need to do is take that GPT vision function and give AIP the instructions to be able to use it when every time a customer has a lost baggage. So I'll do this in two steps. The first step, I'll take my existing data set of suitcase images and suitcase data, and I'll get AIP to summarize each of them. So let's create a new AIP logic file for that. This is a file where I can take in data sets and data as variables and then apply AIP and LLMs comprehensively on top of them. So here you can see that I'm taking in the images, each one of the image objects as a variable, and then writing the summarization query to be taken into my GPT function in the next block. And now I'll use um, the ontology action for updating suitcase variables or updating suitcase objects, um, taking the output from the GPT function and writing that into the ontology. And now for the second logic, I'll take those summaries that I just made and I'll ask AIP to semantically match them against the suitcase that my customer is talking about in their query. So I'll start by taking in the query, the customer query as a variable, and then I'll write a prompt which tells AIP what the task is, and I'll give it the ability to query the GPT function of the last logic file. And these two connected logic files built off of my build with AIP GPT vision product can be used live in my application to generate dynamic batches of responses for suitcases in response to specific baggage queries. So here I am just writing out my prompt making sure that it is thorough. And again, I'm still using AIP logic here. It's a completely point and click tool and it allows us to take in any different types of variables as inputs here. And as you can see, I'm referencing different variables in my GPT vision function and allowing AIP to call upon them. And I'm also giving it tools to do things like querying logic sets, or as we saw in the previous logic file, um, the ability to actually edit the ontology and create actions. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, then let's see how I can integrate it into the front end. So this is my customer service engine application. I'll go into edit mode and I'll add a new widget beside the query. This is where I want the picture to go. And I want this widget to show the matching suitcase that AIP has determined against the query. So here I need to select the right widget, so the media preview widget, and then I'll configure the variables that I need to read into that media widget. So here I am selecting the variables and the correct properties to read. And I'm making sure that they're all named correctly and that they're referencing the right things. So I'm going to be taking in the suitcase description from each of the query objects. And now I am calling upon that function that we just made. And I'll make sure that it's being referenced inside of the workshop to be able to dynamically compute what might be the matching suitcase image for this person's query. So now I'll go back to the media viewer widget and I'll take those variables I just made and I'll pass them through to the widget. And this all happens in the widget configuration on the right hand side. Once I'm happy with that, I'll save it and I'll publish it. So now it's able to determine that it was indeed a blue, shelled heart, blue, blue hard shell suitcase that the customer was talking about. And now if there are different queries, it will generate different pictures of suitcases. So that was all done without code. And that was how to take in images and be able to apply LLMs on top of them.
So now what I want to do is I want to be able to take AIP and allow it to communicate information to an external website. More specifically, at Sunshine Air, we have on our website a customer-facing self-serve tool that allows customers to ask questions live. We want AIP to be able to inform those customers about things on the ontology, and we want it to be able to take information from the ontology that is dynamically updating and constantly updating, and then perform actions so that those will affect things that the customers are talking about on our website. So here I'm using the developer console to be able to look at um, the actions and objects involved in the customer service engine, and I'm developing a software development kit endpoint. And then this endpoint will allow me to use things from the ontology and specifically the customer service engine in that third party application, i.e. our website. And once I've set up all of those links in the ontology, so links between objects and actions, then once I reference them in here in the developer console, then they'll always be there. So for example, as my ontology updates, then so will the information that the customer gets in the front end too. So now we've gone through a few examples of how to make the customer service engine maybe more relevant and more applicable to individual use cases and customers. So maybe with a few more tweaks, such as personalization of the application and adding things like metric cards and details, I'll now be able to have a fully equipped, unique customer service engine for Sunshine Air.